Hey, what's up guys? It's Tips. Over the past week or so, the online conversation surrounding the layering system in Classic WoW has hit a peak. A new wave of community backlash has stemmed from a Twitch clip showing Vinruki exploiting the layering mechanic to loot the Gurubashi Arena chest twice in a row. Here's the clip for reference. Oh my god! I got teleported! Oh my god! <laughs> this clip, along with many others, has reignited the layering and sharding debate, whose origins date back to late 2017. In this video, I'll explain the full story behind layering, its consequences on gameplay, and potential solutions to this incredibly controversial mechanic. Whoa, dude! The layering story begins at BlizzCon 2017, moments after the Classic WoW reveal trailer was dropped. It was during this time that Blizzard President J. Allen Brack said the following. We want to reproduce the game experience that we all enjoyed from the original Classic WoW, not the actual launch experience. What does Jay mean here when he says we don't want to recreate the actual launch experience? Well, back in 2004, when World of Warcraft originally debuted, the launch day was chaotic, to say the least. Day 1 was plagued by login queues and frequent disconnects. Entire servers would go offline for days at a time, resulting in major community backlash. Things got so bad that at some point, Blizzard actually credited game time on accounts as a way of compensating its users for lost playtime. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. In essence, the Vanilla WoW launch experience was an absolute disaster. And that's why Blizzard wants to avoid it. A failed game launch in 2019 can have devastating PR consequences, even for a AAA giant like Blizzard. So to make sure that history doesn't repeat itself, Blizzard concluded that some mechanism had to be deployed in order to ensure a smooth launch for Classic. That mechanism was eventually revealed to the community at BlizzCon 2018, one year after J. Allen Brack's comments. That is where we are looking at using sharding in a very limited way. You think you do, but you don't. On November 2nd, 2018, Blizzard welcomed its fans to their first taste of the Classic WoW project in the form of a playable demo. The demo was made available to any and all who purchased a BlizzCon ticket, including virtual ticket holders at home. The demo was obviously a work in progress, but it was enough to demonstrate core game features, as well as the yet-to-be-announced launch day mechanism. Sharding in case you're unaware of what sharding is, it's essentially the artificial separation of players as a result of high traffic. It's used to ease server load at the cost of community interaction, and as you could probably guess, it's not very popular. Later that day, community manager Josh Allen shed light on the sharding situation via this blue post. As you've noticed, the classic demo does have realm sharding. This is to let as many people as possible experience it without technical issues such as server capacity or spawn density getting in the way. Longer term, we know how crucial it is to the classic experience for you to see your friends when you walk into Stormwind or when you're helping them on a quest you've already completed. And there should only ever be one Kazakh on a realm, no matter how many people are waiting for him to spawn. We're still looking at how we can best deliver an authentic classic experience at launch and in the weeks and months that follow, both in terms of gameplay and community. You won't see phasing, which is tied to specific quests that don't exist in classic, or cross-realm zones, which combine multiple realms together in classic. However, realm sharding is one of the best tools we have to keep realms stable when hundreds of players are swarming the initial few zones and killing the same few mobs, like they will be at the launch of classic. To that end, we do believe that some form of sharding may be helpful, especially in those early days. But we recognize that a cohesive world is critical to WoW Classic and are committed to bringing that to you. Unfortunately, this blue post did not have the effect that Blizzard intended. Things got so bad that on the very next day, November 3rd, World of Warcraft game director Ian Hazakostas responded directly to the sharding issue at BlizzCon. I'll play the entire question and answer for you guys now. Yeah, all right. 
With uh, CRZ and phasing off the table for Classic WoW, how will you address server population concerns in Classic, both with caps and possibly with low pop realms? OK, so uh, for some folks who've been jumping into the Classic demo, you may have noticed that if you jump in with your friend, you're not necessarily always seeing them, e each other in the same version of the Barons right now. That is sharding. There has been a lot of concern and discussion expressed around it on the internet. We understand. So for first off, the demo is kind of a special case, right? Because it's not an organic world where everyone is spread out. It's literally every single character using a template being created in the exact same point in the world in Barrens or Westfall. We leverage that tech to make the demo experience run more smoothly. Now that said, we recognize that launching WoW Classic poses a couple of unique challenges. Unlike, unlike launching a traditional game that's brand new, where you can assume that everyone who is jumping in there on launch day has the intent to at least explore playing it long term, we expect that early on with Classic, there are going to be some people who are there, die hard, dedicated, they're racing to defeat Ragnaros and Anixia. There are going to be others who just want to check it out casually. They just want to see what all the fuss is about. They want to see what they missed. And our concern is, I think exactly as you suggest, what, what's that going to look like? What's that going to do to realm communities as subserver populations may dwindle over time? That is where we are looking at using sharding in a very limited way. We understand, and I understand completely, that sharding is antithetical to the concept of a cohesive classic community where you're competing over limited resources. When Lord Kazakh is up and guilds are racing to defeat him, there needs to only be one Lord Kazakh. If you're trying to get, you know, if you're trying to lock down the thorium veins that spawn in limited sections of the world, you should be competing over limited resources. That said, the first few weeks, when everybody is packed into Valley of Trials, when everybody is packed into Elwyn, we think we can use sharding there in a limited, time-limited way to solve the initial launch day load problems while making sure that in the long run, as server communities solidify, there's a healthy population and a single world for everyone to live in. After hearing Ian's response, it's pretty clear that Blizzard was not excited about the prospect of sharding, but felt compelled to utilize the mechanism for the initial hype wave. A significant portion of the community seemed to agree, especially since sharding was said to be a temporary solution lasting only a few weeks at most. But not everyone in the community was satisfied. To some, the sharding mechanism, even if only deployed for a limited amount of time, was a major line in the sand. In the days following Ian's statements, numerous alternative solutions to sharding began to hit the forums. Many of these proposed solutions were far-fetched and counterintuitive, but a few seemed reasonable enough and gained traction quickly. In order to keep things short and simple, I've consolidated the most popular sharding alternatives that were proposed by the community after BlizzCon. Number 1, Login Queues, Number 2, Dynamic Spawning, and Number 3, High Volume Server Merging. We'll come back to these alternatives in just a bit. The point is, the community was able to shortlist a few ideas that could potentially be used in lieu of sharding. However, in the months following BlizzCon 2018, it became abundantly clear that each of the proposed solutions had their own unique drawbacks. It seemed that no matter which mechanism was used, there would always be a group of players that weren't satisfied. After months of debate on the forums and subreddits, it seemed that many in the community had accepted the fact that sharding would make it to classic and that it was no better or worse than the other proposed alternatives. Then May 7th happened. On this fortuitous Tuesday, Blizzard invited a small cluster of media outlets to Irvine, California in order to showcase their progress on Warcraft Reforged, Modern World of Warcraft, and of course, Classic WoW. I attended the event as well, and it was there that we were first introduced to the concept of layering. We do actually have uh, some news news on that front. Um, again, as, as Ian alluded to, sharding has uh, some less than desirable uh, side effects when it comes to World of Warcraft Classic. However, it, uh, the ability to scale up dynamically to demand is, is very enticing to ensuring a smooth launch. So when we looked at, at those two things, we, we our key goal was to do what's right for a classic, and for that we uh, effectively built out a new technology that we're, we're kind of calling layering. Um, and this new technology kind of allows us to spin up World of Warcraft continents wholesale. So an entire Eastern Kingdoms and entire Kalimdor as sort of one single seamless continuous world that uh, all players will be able to play in. 
Unlike sharding, which phased out players based on local area population, layering phased out players based on full world populations, generating an entirely new Azeroth each time a layer's population cap was reached. Each layer would work as its own isolated map, meaning that players would not phase away from their colleagues as they moved from zone to zone, solving one of the biggest issues with sharding. However, if players wanted to play with their friends, they could still transfer layers by being invited to a friend's group. Furthermore, because layers generated a whole new Azeroth, each layer could harbor entire server populations, meaning that players could still experience thousands of concurrent characters in a single zone, something that sharding does not allow. But while layering is a clear upgrade from sharding, it still has its fair share of issues. I've already shown how layering can be used to exploit resource nodes like chests in the Venruki clip, but unfortunately the system can be abused further. Here's another clip from streamer and content creator Monkey News, where we see him use the layering mechanism to escape unfavorable world PvP ganks. Quick, someone lay me, baby! Lay me! I need an invite, quick! Ha 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 so while layering did fix the empty world feeling of sharding and removed much of the immersion breaking phasing that sharding was notorious for, it did not solve the problem entirely. And that brings us to today. Layering and its alternatives are at the forefront of community discourse once again. So let's talk about layering. Let's talk dynamic spawns. Let's talk about server merges and server queues and all the pros and cons of each of these systems. But before we dive in though, I do want to say that everything you're about to hear is simply my opinion. It's not more right or more wrong than yours, and you are obviously entitled to your own. With that said, I'll begin by dissecting each alternative to layering, its pros and cons, and why I think it should or should not be used for Classic's launch. Let's start off with the first proposed solution, login queues. The login queue solution proposes that Classic WoW should launch without sharding, without layering, or without any other server accommodation. Instead, once a server population cap is reached, all additional players attempting to log in will be placed in a queue. This means that, hypothetically, if Classic WoW launched with 20 servers and each server was capped at 3,000 concurrent players, which was the estimated server concurrency back in vanilla, only 60,000 people would be able to play Classic WoW simultaneously, while everyone else would be placed in a queue and would have to wait their turn. The problems with this solution are quite obvious and quite damning. There could be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of players waiting in line. I can only imagine the outrage on the forums if 80% of the player base couldn't log in for the first two weeks of Classic's launch. It would be an absolute PR nightmare for Blizzard, and in my opinion, as pure as the solution may seem to be, it's clear from JL Umbrak's comments that this solution is not up for debate. So with login queues pretty much off the table, let's move on to the second proposed solution, Dynamic Spawning. Dynamic spawning can be described as the flexible modification of mob and node respawn timers based on a server's population. This means that whenever a boar is killed in the Valley of Trials, it would respawn at a variable rate that changes based on how many players are nearby. If 100 players are in Duratar, the spawn timer might decrease from 5 minutes to 2 minutes. If 1000 people are in Duratar, the spawn timer might decrease from 5 minutes to 2 seconds. Due to many private servers using dynamic spawn rates for their server launches, we already know what dynamic spawning leads to. Instead of venturing through the game, completing quests, and exploring dungeons, players on dynamic spawn servers are forced to camp a single, instant spawning mob for hours on end. Additionally, because dynamic spawns affect nodes, notorious players end up abusing the system to mine the same resource node over and over again, creating massive inflation in the economy. I believe it was Northdale's launch where chest node farming was abused so much that all resource nodes were eventually disabled on the server, preventing people from leveling their professions. Not exactly an authentic vanilla experience. In my opinion, dynamic spawning is just as abusable as sharding or layering, but far more immersion breaking, and as a result, I don't think it's a viable solution on its own. But what about the third alternative to layering? High volume server merges. I've seen this solution proposed in many different forums, but my favorite is the Illidan123 solution proposed by X Adriana on the official forums. 
Instead of sharding as we know it, X Adriana suggests creating predefined server clusters that would eventually be merged over time. For example, Illidan 1, 2, 3, and 4 would all be separate servers at launch, but would eventually converge once tourists leave the game and populations die down. While this sounds quite similar to layering and sharding, the key distinguishing factor is that players in this system are not able to cross over to another version of Illidan. All of the servers within the cluster would be independent until their respective merges. At first glance, this solution sounds quite promising. However, upon further examination, the cracks in the solution start to reveal themselves. What happens when two people on different realms within the cluster have the same name? Who gets to keep the name during the merge? What happens to the economy when the servers merge and all of a sudden iron ore is going for double or triple the price? What happens when two server communities collide, each with their own culture, etiquette, and unique story? A lot happens, and very little of it is good. If you're interested in reading about the consequences of server merges, Massively OP did a great story in 2015. I'll leave that in the description below. It's definitely a really cool read and gives you some context as to why server merging is very seldom a good idea. The TLDR though, high volume server merges are absolutely destructive to server communities. And when compared directly to sharding or layering, the problems seem to outweigh the benefits. Three alternative solutions, no clean answer. And that's the problem with the entire layering debate. None of the proposed alternatives are objectively better than what we currently have. Each of the alternatives have their own set of drawbacks and destructive qualities, as does layering. It's important to understand that for the layering issue, we're not looking for a perfect solution, because unfortunately, there is none. We're looking for the lesser of many evils. So with that framework in mind, which classic launch solution proposed thus far is the lesser of all evils? Honestly, I don't know. All of the solutions are imperfect at best and game-breaking at worst. The truth is, I can't in good conscience recommend any of these solutions because they all freaking suck. However, I do think I know which solution Blizzard is going to use. And while I don't like it personally, I think it's worth at least discussing so we can get the best version of it possible before launch. Yes, I'm talking about layering. Based on the fact that layering was the custom solution created specifically to do away with sharding, it seems pretty clear that Blizzard is kind of all in on this system. They've invested so much time and money into developing the layering tech, I can't see them throwing it all out and starting from scratch barely two months before launch. I don't want to sound defeatist, but it's probably not going to happen. The good news, however, if you want to call it that, is that I'm pretty sure layering is far from its final form, and I'm certain that Blizzard is listening attentively to the community's suggestions on improving it. If layering is the card that we're going to be dealt, then I do have some suggestions as to how it could be improved. Suggestion number one is that layering should only last one to two weeks at most. To be fair, Blizzard has somewhat confirmed this, with Josh Allen stating that sharding would only be used for the early days of Classic, and with Ian Hazakosta saying it would be used only for the first few weeks. I have heard some people suggest that layering could go all the way until Phase 2, but I think that's a little bit of a misunderstanding. I'm pretty sure it's Blizzard's intention to use layering as minimally as possible and get rid of it as soon as they can. I'm pretty sure that the quicker the Classic WoW tourists fade away, the quicker that layering will be disabled. Suggestion number two, layering should ideally be restricted to the starting zones. I don't know if this is even possible based on the layering tech, but I know it's possible with sharding. That being said, I do wish that layering was restricted to the 1 to 20 zones, which would be incredibly ideal. Exploits like Venruki looting the arena chest would not be possible because STV is a higher level zone, and monkey news dodging ganks could not happen as the 1 to 20 starting zones are typically non-contested to begin with, with no PvP. So, in my personal opinion, if it were possible to restrict starting zones, or I'm sorry, restrict layering to starting zones, I think that would be absolutely ideal, and hopefully would be the nail in the coffin to this entire argument. But in the event that layering cannot be restricted to certain zones, layering should have some kind of internal timer before the effect kicks in. For example, if I'm invited to a group, I should not be layered off instantly. Instead, the effect should be delayed for a brief, unspecified amount of time, somewhere between maybe 20 and 60 seconds. This would prevent players from layer hopping to avoid ganks, because the buffer time would prevent them from getting out of that moment as quickly as possible. 
Additionally, if the duration prior to trigger is randomly generated each time, players exploiting resources will become less of a problem, as exploiters will have a tougher time knowing if the group they just joined was on their current layer or another layer. In my opinion, a simple internal timer delaying a layer transfer after a group invite could solve a lot of the problems associated with layering, although admittedly it would not solve all of them. But at the end of the day, these are just a few ideas as to how the layering system can be improved. I'd love to hear yours though, so let me know in the comments section below how you would fix the layering issue or what alternative solutions you would prefer to layering outright. I'm looking forward to reading your comments and thoughts, and hopefully we can come up with something that preserves the integrity of vanilla, while at the same time allows for a somewhat smooth launch experience, as indicated by Jay at BlizzCon. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, sub it up and stick around, because we got more coming. For more classic WoW content news and updates, you can check me out on Twitter at twitter.com slash tipsoutbaby. Or if you want to discuss layering and other classic WoW related issues live, you can do so by checking me out live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tipsoutbaby. But aside from that, have a wonderful day, fellas. I'll see you guys live on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby!